I've been asked a couple times recently how to set up a table of contents for your blog post inside of Generate Blocks. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the really simple steps to set up a free plugin that gives you this functionality and create a sticky sidebar like you see here with our table of contents in it. If that sounds like something you could use on one of your blog posts, then stick around and let's get started. So for the purposes of this demo, I actually set up a very simplistic blog post layout. What we have here is the content over on the left-hand side and some empty space over here to put our table of contents in in kind of a sticky sidebar. If you do wanna check out some more advanced, nicer layouts for a blog post, I should have a video popping up here that goes over some of my best practices for designing blog posts. But for the purposes of this demo, I thought something plain and simple would work great. So there's a few things we need to accomplish here. We need to set up our table of contents plugin. We need to go in and edit this blog post template to add our sticky sidebar and put the table of contents in it. And then we're gonna to need to do some CSS tweaks. So let's start by going ahead and adding the plugin we're gonna to wanna to use for our table of contents. I'll go to plugins, add new, and we'll search for table of contents. Now I've tried several of these, including table of contents plus and this easy table of contents, but what I've landed on really liking is this simple TOC. Now the other plugins work fine, but when you install and activate them, there's configuration you need to do here inside the dashboard of WordPress. And for me, it's a little bit more complex than what I really need out of a table of contents plugin. So I really like this simple TOC. So we're gonna go ahead and install that and activate it. And I'm gonna show you what I like about this. Now that we got that activated, we need to go into our elements to find our blog post template, and we'll go ahead and edit that. So here you can see I have my post content, I have my featured image. We'll pop open the list view here. So you can see in this left container of my grid, I have all my post content. And right now the right container is empty. This is where I wanna create the sticky sidebar that's gonna contain my table of contents. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is make sure that this column is stretching the entire height of this section. So I'll go ahead and select this container. We'll scroll down to the sizing panel and we'll make the minimum height 100%. Now you can see this is taking up the full height here and that's what's gonna give us our track to allow this to stay sticky. Inside of that, we can actually create our sticky container here. We'll go ahead and give this a bit of a border radius, maybe a one pixel border and some padding. We can make the background white to stand off of our light gray background and change the border to something a little lighter. Now inside of here, I'm gonna go ahead and give this my own title. So I'm just gonna use a generate blocks headline and I'm gonna say table of contents. Maybe we go ahead and make that bold. Underneath that, what we need to do here is add a new block for simple TOC. If you just start typing in table, you'll find it here. When we insert that, it's automatically gonna put this heading in and it's gonna give us our settings here, which we can go through. For me, I like controlling the heading separately so I can decide what kind of HTML tag I give it and I can style it the way I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the heading there. Now we get to decide what the minimum level and maximum level of headings we want to include in our table of contents are. So for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and do H2, which is usually where I start. I don't find that there's any reason to include an H1 inside the table of contents. And for the maximum level, I'll go ahead and leave this at H6. But if you're using tons of headlines on your blog post, you might wanna shorten that down to H3s or even H4s so you don't have so many items inside your table of contents. Here inside the advanced features, they do have the option to put your table of contents inside an accordion, which might be nice if we weren't doing a sidebar, if you just want it in line with your content, that can work well. In this case, we're not gonna use it. You have the ability to set smooth scrolling on here. You have the ability to set these as absolute URLs, which we don't need to do in this case. And lastly, there's this option for wrapper div. And what this does is adds a wrapper around this table of contents with the role of navigation and adds ARIA attributes to it. And this is gonna be really good for accessibility, which is another reason I really like this plugin. What we just did in a matter of seconds, even with me explaining it to you, we've done everything we need to do to set up this table of contents. Of course, here inside the editor, we're not actually seeing anything display because we don't have any headings inside of this. We're gonna have to go on the front end to view that. But we have one more step we need to do here in the editor to make sure we get our sticky sidebar set up. I'm gonna grab this container inside of our track. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna give it a class of sticky sidebar. 
We'll go ahead and hit update that. And now we can take a look at one of our live blog posts on this page. So here I just have the one set up. And if we scroll down, we can see our table of contents is coming in. It's nesting the H2s and H3s. And if you click on any of these, it will scroll you right to that part of the article. Of course, we want to do some styling tweaks here to make this sticky. And I also like doing some tweaks to the way this list actually looks. So to do that, we're gonna to have to write a little bit of CSS. Here in the customizer under additional CSS, the first thing we'll tackle is that sticky sidebar. So the class I gave it was sticky sidebar. And what we need to do is say position sticky. And then with the top, we'll say we want it to stick four rim from the top. So now if we scroll, we can see that that whole sidebar is staying sticky and following you along as you scroll through this blog post. But there are a few little tweaks I like to make to the actual styling of this table of contents. This is fine, of course, but I really don't like the nesting or the bulleted list. So we're gonna write a little bit of CSS to fix that. The first one is writing simple TOC, and then we're gonna target the unordered list. And in here, we're gonna do list style type, and we're gonna do this none, which is gonna get rid of our bullet points. Then we can do the margin left, and make that zero, which is gonna align them all to the left. And then the margin bottom of zero, which is just gonna get rid of a little extra padding or margin that was at the bottom of this list. Now, I feel like these are a little bit tight and you can't tell exactly where one ends and the other begins. So we can write one more rule here to fix that. For that, we'll do simple TOC and then we'll target the LI. And we can do margin top and we can do something like one M. And that will space all these a little bit more out so you can easily tell which headline is which headline. We'll go ahead and publish this, jump out of the customizer and test this out. So as we scroll, we can see this is staying sticky on the side. And of course, if we click to any of these headlines, we get scrolled exactly to their position. Having the table of contents on your blog post is really great for UX, especially for the way people read the web today. Most people don't open up an article and read it from top to bottom, start to finish. They will often jump around and this gives your users the ability to quickly see what kind of information is covered in your blog post and find exactly what they're needing. If you wanna check out some other videos I've done with Generate Press and Generate Blocks, there are a couple videos popping up here. And if you'd like to join us inside the admin bar community, we have 7,000 other website developers sharing tips and tricks all the time. We'll catch you guys on the next video.